Today's Eat So Facto is for a one Mr. Jim Carroll, who was the first person to comment and ask about a food origin story. You want an episode? Comment, like, and subscribe. But for Mr. Carroll, we get to the bottom of a greasy spoon of a mystery. Who was Joe? And why was his life such a mess? The sloppy history of the sloppy Joe. That's coming up on Eat So Facto. was Sloppy Joe. Was he an unkempt chef at a fine restaurant? You are getting sloppy, Joe. I'm really sorry. I need help. Was he a career criminal under interrogation by an intrepid detective bent on getting the truth? You're getting sloppy, Joe. <laughs> Who was Joe? To get to the answer of that question, we first have to answer the question, what is Joe? The Sloppy Joe can trace its family all the way back to the 1920s to its grandfather, the Loose Meat Sandwich. That's some nickname for Grandpa, eh? Oh, Loose Meat. In the 1920s, ground beef cooked quickly in a skillet and served on a bun was all the rage. In 1926, the Made Right restaurants in Iowa put them on the menu and called them Loose Meat Sandwiches. Around the same time, a man named David Heglin, who owned the Ye Old Tavern in Sioux City, Iowa, had enough marketing sense or common sense to call them tavern sandwiches instead. But somewhere along the way, someone decided to cook the ground beef in tomato sauce and spices and call this type of tavern sandwich a Sloppy Joe. <laughs> From Grandpa Loose Meat to his grandson Sloppy Joe in a generation. Mm, the American dream. But there's a twist. Was Joe actually a guy named Hap? One of the earliest mentions of the Sloppy Joe was at a restaurant in Coshocton, Ohio, called the Hamburg Shop. In an ad in the Coshocton Tribune on October 29th, 1944, the Hamburg Shop claimed to be introducing a new sandwich called the Sloppy Joe for only 10 cents. The chef or owner, a man known as Hap, seemed excited to get people to know about his sandwich, even if his grammar left something to be desired. Like the apostrophe and ellipses imply that after much thought, those 10 cents actually belong to a group of Joes. What would a plural of Joes be? A coterie of Joes? A passel of Joes? Oh, a clot of Joes. I like that one. You know, for what loose meat does to your heart. <clears throat> but I digress. Even if this is an early mention with bad punctuation, I don't think Hap was the inventor. The text of his ad says, introducing that new sandwich, implying that people had heard of the Sloppy Joe, but Hap was merely introducing it to Koshoktonians? This opportunist was just jumping on the loose meat bandwagon. <laughs> like when Lawrence Welk decided to feature that new style of music of the kids these days with the song One Toke Over the Line on his wholesome family variety show. Welk didn't invent the coded drug-themed folk music of the free love generation. He just never saw a bandwagon he didn't jump on. Ho! Oh, band jokes! Lawrence Welk. The original loose meat. The term Sloppy Joe predates the sandwich itself. In early 20th century slang, a Sloppy Joe was any cheap, quick diner, like saying the Greasy Spoon or the Hash House. It's a placeholder name, but in this case, it used an actual name as a placeholder. This practice goes back to the 15th century when common names were applied to common objects, like calling medieval toilets Jacks or Jakes or, you know, the John. Why couldn't they give it like an obscure name, like the Reginald or something? Um, apologies, my dear, but I must pay a visit to the Reginald. At some point in the early 1940s, the Sloppy Joe was so associated with the whole idea of the diner that it took on the diner's nickname. Kind of like how you don't actually have to be in, you know, New England to get New England clam chowder. Ho, 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 ho! What's that smell? It's future content! So, the Sloppy Joe wasn't called the Sloppy Joe because some messy guy named Joe invented it. It was called a Sloppy Joe because this common man's sandwich took on the common man's name and the common man's favorite place to eat, the Sloppy Joe.
So we're gonna make one, but we have a challenge. How can we up the game of the Sloppy Joe? If we're gonna make one, we wanna make it more special, less middle school cafeteria and more, you know, college cafeteria. But here's the challenge. We don't wanna change what it is. We could easily cook this with Wagyu beef and homemade ketchup and put it on toasted brioche buns, but it wouldn't be a Sloppy Joe. It'd be like a, like a Sloppy Emperor Joseph. That sounds like a super idea. Shut up, loose meat. Entschuldigung. So it's uh, it's time for taste test, gang. Um, uh, uh, tell everybody who you are. I'm Henry Tufts, and I'm going to eat this delicious looking. What was it called? <laughs> sloppy Joe. Oh, a sloppy Joe. <laughs> okay, so this thing might this thing's gonna be pretty messy. Okay, now you can now you can take a bite. Try to eat. Oh no, oh no, this is bad news. <laughs> This is how you have to, this is how you eat a sloppy joe. You have to, it takes two people to hold. That's how messy it is. Um, is it good? Do you like it? Mm -hmm. It is good. I think it's really good. What are things that you like about it? It's good. Well, there you go. There's your <laughs> restaurant critic right there. As usual, click like and subscribe, but also, uh, what is a food origin story you want to know about? Post in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Let's explore it together on Eat So Facto. And next week, next week, are you ready for this? Next week's going to be something special because next week we're going to do the fanciest, most wonderful, most exquisite, most sublime dessert known to man, at least in my opinion. We're going to do Grand Marnier Souffle. That's next week on what? Eat So Facto. Right, I'm gonna have a bite. It's a fact. Just timing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is messy.